Hello, hello, hello. Two Davids walk into a bar as filmed in front of a live studio audience. There's a charity event at the car museum tonight. It seems I'm expected. Oh, a little last minute, isn't it? Charity doesn't punch a clock, my friend. I guess you'll be needing your tuxedo. No, I think something a bit more in keeping with the time, something not as formal, something Clooney-ish. I have just the thing. And it's loaded and ready to go. You know, I'll never get used to that. A nostalgic nod to that series you used to do? Oh, no. It was there when I bought the house. I, I did add the sign, however. Nice touch. That'll be all. Thank you, Alfred. Jerry. Jerry. All right, hello. This is, uh... Two Davids walk into a bar. Uh, I'm David Anderson. I'm uh, David Lawler. How are you, David? I am well. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Batcave or <laughs> uh, back it's, to the uh, Batcave. Back to the Batcave. No, it's a, it's it's return to the Batcave. The, Bat the adventures of Adam and Bert. The misadventures. We're, we're messing it up. Like the this. misadventures the of Adam and Bert. Adam and Bert. Yes. And this movie, I think, was made in 2003. 2003. Uh, so that would have made it about. 25 years removed from no wait let me see 20, uh, 75 no, 30 break out the calculator oh jeez uh <laughs> it ended in 68 so that's 68 yeah, 68 68 78 80, 30 88. so it's like 30 35 years removed 35 years and i wonder when this why this was this associated with an adam west book that he wrote and then they made a movie and it sort of promoted the whole thing because it seemed to come out of nowhere of why was Batman popular in 2003? Uh, Batman, um, Batman Begins had not come out until a couple yeah, was, years later. Was this around the time? No, this wouldn't this Clooney, would have been a couple uh, of years uh, after Batman the Batman Forever, movie. Batman, uh, gosh, Batman. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin, that would be 97. Jeez. Although Clooney is mentioned in this. Yeah, yeah. I think what this mainly had to do with was Adam West's newfound celebrity because he... I, I remember around that time he was everywhere. He was, I, I think, like it was Seth MacFarlane who cast him in Family Guy as the mayor of Quahog, Rhode Island. Well, if and, you, but if you remember, and the he history, plays himself. He actually yeah. plays himself. He doesn't play a fictional character. He plays yeah, Adam and, West. Yeah, and, although I mean, Family Guy. If I remember correctly, Family Guy started in two thousand two thousand or so, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Okay. So, and by this time, by the time this was on, I think it had been canceled because people forget uh, it had just been canceled, and then it was it was brought back, brought by back Fox by popular after demand. yeah after Adult Swim started playing reruns and D, of it. D, people were buying them on DVD. That's kind of like a memory of mine from two thousand late two thousand. Yeah, yeah, that Christmas, and and Christmas, like Futurama too. Also, Christmas two thousand three or yeah, I think it was two thousand three. Mayor West, you have lymphoma. Oh my! Probably from rolling around in that toxic waste. I see. What in God's name were you trying to prove? I was trying to gain superpowers. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. <laughs> but I, I believe West also uh, p helped produce the movie, and he served as the uh, technical consultant on it as well. Mm -hmm. I saw his name in the credits a couple of times. I, I, I really liked the Robin. The guy they had playing Robin... I, I liked him. He was he was about perfect. He was about perfect. He was he was physically so tiny. And he knew it was like he and I looked the guy up because I, I knew the face and I remember the face. He played the young. Oh, uh, the, the young monster in the monsters today. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie he monster. Played. He played like because they did the monsters today. There was a there was a revival of the monsters in the early 90s called Monsters Today, and it was like John Shuck hmm. <laughs> of Star Trek Four and Star Trek right. VI and uh, MASH and, and all, a whole bunch of other stuff. He played Herman Munster, and basically the plot was uh, Grandpa's experiment went awry, and they were like frozen in these suspended animation things, and then they woke up in the 90s. So he was in that. Oh, so, okay, so what they're doing there is kind of like that Brady Bunch uh, gag from the Brady Bunch movie, 
where they're kind of like living in their own little bubble, but it's yeah, contemporary well, times. Well, if you remember, the Munsters were already living in their own bubble anyway, and they didn't well, understand yeah. what was yeah, going that's on. True. I, and I looked the guy up, and he like he actually had all that training that Burt Ward actually had, like the acrobatic training. That's how he was able to do mm-hmm. all those acrobatic things uh, when they had the audition. And then the guy they had playing Adam West, I thought he got sort of the voice he's in the finch- ca- well, he got yeah, the voice in the cadence close enough. But I thought that his physical form, he was in a little bit too good a shape and a little too muscly to be playing. He was he might, he could have played Lyle Wagner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was. Lyle well, Wagner I, comes in at some point. I, like, yeah, Lyle Wagner is involved. Yes, we'll yeah. get to that, though. But I, I do have in here that the actor playing Adam in the flashbacks, he does a good job, but he's no Adam West. He doesn't have that that je ne sais quoi. That creates it's, an it's Adam West. It's kind of like William Shatner, too. Adam West yeah, and William Shatner are you very gotta similar. you got to understand, Adam West, at this point, and even at this point in this movie, he's doing the Adam West character. And he There's gets a, into it. He gets into why he does it this way, because they, they talk about talking each other over, like, you're talking too slowly to make sure that I can't get, speak. Get, uh, sp- screen time. And uh, I, I he, he explained in the... You know, he was explaining to him why he does it that way. He he saw the irony in the series immediately, and that's why he chose to do it. He he looked at the script. I, that, that this well, is hilarious. At least this is the way he explained why he did it. <laughs> in the uh, well, in this movie, well, okay. The whole thing about the movie is it's all it's all incredibly meta, if you like to use that word. Yeah, before it was really a thing. When you think it was, it. yeah, it was it was sort of they. Uh, the whole plot is built around. Uh, I guess Bert and and Adam are invited, quote unquote, to some kind of charity function involving the Batmobile. Uh, but somebody steals the Batmobile and is is uh, presume presumably to lead them on a chase to find it. Mm-hmm. And um, it, you know, I, I I thought it was very suspicious at the beginning. Mm. Uh, but they uh, so Adam and Bert hop into Adam's car, which has yeah. a license plate that reads Kapow. Which is <laughs> I also noticed. That oh, like, and Adam says this is a job for actors. Yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, that should be the title of our episode. An elephant. I always do this. What's that supposed to mean? What does an elephant always do? Anyone? We'll have to solve the puzzle on the way. Come on, Bert. Adam, you're crazy. Thanks. We'll take my car. It's already been established. Hey, if you're looking for the Batmobile, it went that way. You have a sharp eye, my friend. Did the driver say anything? He has directions. Highway to Arizona. Arizona? That could take till dawn. Those orphans are counting on us, Bert. You want to be the one to look in their sad little eyes tomorrow and tell them there's no Batmobile? You're right. Let's go. <clears throat> uh, yeah, t- uh, tip the man, will you? Thanks, chump. There you go. Mm. <laughs> this is a job for a couple of washed up actors. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, like, uh, what I I noticed that when the car speeds away, um, it, they, it's done so cheaply. It's like you see, it you is, don't even yeah. see the car leaving, but you hear it, like, tip over or something. And then you see, like, the, it's almost like the Back to the Future sort of, uh, flame trail stripe things but it yeah. looks like they yeah it looks like it was like it did it like a like a like a cart or like cart not a cartwheel but like a tip like it tipped over and then went around right like they couldn't afford to do the stunt so they just sort of <laughs> yeah yeah it the does. after effects of it the whole thing is very low budget it's a very low budget affair yeah i think more i think mon- money was spent on the sets of like I think the, money was spent on getting the back cave. I think money you know. was spent on getting all these old people together because you know they probably yeah, don't work cheap. <laughs> now, first off, let's let's talk. Can we talk a little bit about what, why nature, why time was so cruel to Burt Ward? He turned. He became. He became very rotund. He became very became, robust. Yeah, I think it has something to do with the fact he was so young when he started. Like he was probably. I mean, they kind of get into it on the in sort of the backstory of he was already not, he wasn't like 15 or 16. So he kind of like looked, he looked the part, especially because he wore the mask and, 
and everything. But, you know, he's he's young, he's in shape, he's acrobatic, he's doing stuff. So that's what we remember him as. So then when we see him as just some sort of tubby, oldish guy, I'm going to guess in his late 50s by now in this. Yes. It's just it's this weird shock. Whereas Adam West, he was already a guy like in his 30s, probably late 30s. He he was a handsome man, but yes, he, he aged did. gracefully devastatingly handsome i looked up some old i was trying to look for photos for the episode and everything and i was coming across some shots of adam west just adam west just chilling yeah. hanging out back in those days really good looking guy i mean seriously good looking yeah lyle wagner probably better looking though i'm gonna i'm gonna in a convention in fact in a conventional batman sense i would have picked lyle wagner <laughs> oh and the reason we keep mentioning lyle wagner is yeah. because he read for the part of batman did yeah. a couple of screen tests and yeah. They actually included. They included the old screen his tests. screen tests, yeah. and, and he was he's, good. He's okay. He's not. But again, this is kind of like when you see Chris Pine playing Captain Kirk. It just doesn't seem right. Now, the the whole movie is built around a series of flashbacks, and it's like it reminds me of a sketch on Saturday Night Live a long time ago, back in the late eighties, something like that, with Justine Bateman, where they did a parody of family ties. And it was all just <laughs> flashback leading into flashback. This reminds me of the time you flashback, flashback, flashback. I remember. And, uh, 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 Dana Carvey played, uh, Alex Keaton. <laughs> he keeps, he keeps going up to people and, and putting his arm around him. He says, listen, you gotta do and this. Then, you gotta and then, walk uh, in. Oh, uh, Oh, I forgot her name. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, Victoria the, Jackson. Victoria Jackson plays, playing uh, teeny others going. And all she just does yeah. is go, she goes, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. So, uh, so they they get into this adventure uh, because, frankly, they don't really have anything else to do. So they get into this adventure, trying to tra track down the Batmobile. And every time they hit a stumbling block or some kind of a similar, it's kind There's of like a Rosh clue. It's like the, it's like the Rashomon leaves, or it's something. Like the, the Riddler leaves him a clue or something. Or well, no. Don't spoil it yet. Not until we get okay. to the end. Well, they, but they get left. <laughs> you spoiled it. That's it. They get left a clue, like the yeah. Riddler would leave a clue. Like yeah, they're getting a serious clue. They keep getting serious clues. You have to remember, like what what does an elephant always do? <laughs> no, an, elephant an elephant never forgets. Always we must ne remember no. the past, <laughs> or something like that. Lest we are doomed to repeat Lest it, old chum. <laughs> Uh, so so it's like every time they get into a situation it kind of like maybe mirrors something in the past Adam or Bert will say hey remember the time that you and then all this and that you were cast so we go into like Bert's backstory he like I guess had no experience whatsoever he decided to get into acting almost as a lark because he needed money because he just got married his wife is played by Amy Acker who was uh, Fred on Angel I remember her specifically she's Ooh. a very, very beautiful woman actually and she she actually dumps him for some reason. Like he had to kiss a girl on Batman, which is well, he stupid. had to kiss a girl, and then she she's like she doesn't seem to understand that he's an actor and he's doing a thing, and, and she like, doesn't get he's, the and whole he's fiction being a good thing. husband. You have no reason to be jealous. Married people don't kiss other people. I'm only acting. I don't care. I don't want you to do it. I am holding up production. Anyone see Bert? It has nothing to do with us. It's my work. Why can't you see that? I hear the stories about Adam and all those women, the, the fans, the co-stars. Adam's Adam. He's single. He's not me. It, you have no reason to be jealous. How many times do I have to tell you that? And how long before that changes? Do what you want. He's not doing an Adam West thing where he's just, you know, chase and tail. Although at this point, Adam West is divorced. So what happens then is he does the Batusi with Julie Newmar. And I know damn well it's Julie Newmar. And everyone else does too. It is. Uh, now, we... Uh, let me see. Where am I in my notes? Oh, okay. So Bert, because he's completely unknown, he only gets $350 a week, which is still good money in 1967, Yeah, that'd probably be like a couple of grand today or something. Well, yeah. It's... A well, couple yeah. of grand a week. But what that is, okay, he was getting less, because I know this for a fact from my wife, because she does the monkeys write-ups. Um, the monkeys got paid more than she did, and they were complete unknowns as well. They got 450 a week, which is still really not that much money when you consider it. Because from what I understand, uh, like William Shatner received, a, I think, a $10,000 uh, $10, weekly salary for being on Star Trek. Nimoy got several thousand DeForest Kelly got several thousand uh all the lesser known people got around that kind of Burt Ward pay so they weren't really like 
They weren't paying these people much money back then comparatively to how they pay them now. My name's David. What does David mean? David means business, baby. <laughs> Yeah, but he was getting laid left and right after he got divorced and the wife left him. He was, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> how much, That's I mean, you're, well, yeah, you're basically he... getting paid to get laid left and right. And of course, he's meeting crazy women every once in a while. But, you know, you're basically getting paid to be, and this is a great thing. I mean, if he could have parlayed it into something, yeah. this is like you're getting paid to basically hang out. I mean, try having a real job. Those suck. <laughs> <laughs> and to my knowledge, to my knowledge, a lot of these uh, these these uh, anecdotes are based on his own remembrances, and they appeared in his his memoir. He had a memoir uh, around, about uh, being Robin, mm -hmm. so he wrote a lot of this stuff into his book. Meanwhile, there's a strange narrator that only Adam hears for a little while. Like yes. Adam starts hearing the voice of a narrator. And I, I, I'm going to say you do find out who the narrator is at the end, but I could tell who it was. Almost, I, was like, I, I, I think I know who that is, and then, I, and then they reveal him at the end. I was thinking. I wasn't thinking that at all. I was thinking it was the actual narrator from the show. But mm. I had that wrong because that was William Dozer, who was also the creator and producer of the show. He was the guy who would say, is it curtains for the dynamic duo? You know, things like <laughs> that's, that. That's a cheap way to do it. You don't have to pay an announcer. <laughs> but I do want to interrupt to say that this is, this is the Batman that I really remembered. I think the first time i saw batman i had seen that movie that they made the theatrical movie not the TV when you, show. all i remember of that movie is, is sort of the the, repe the repeating gif that they that people use of him running around with the bomb mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's just him running with that's all i remember from that um i i well the, it was okay we had the tv show for some reason this is really strange because you didn't see this back then the, the TV show had already been out for a couple of months or maybe a year. I think maybe it was a year. It was between the first well, and second season. Yeah, what they said was, and, I, mean, I think I think that because they said it ran for three seasons, I think that its first season was like one of those mid-season replacement kind of shows. So it, I think it started kind of late. They're like, hey, this thing's catching on. We'll, we'll slap together a movie while yeah, we're... Yeah, they, they actually made a movie, released made a movie, theatrically. Got that thing out. And so and for like, some reason, Julie Newmar wasn't involved, so they got Lee Merriweather to play. And I, you know what? This is a tough one for me because I really love Lee Merriweather. I mean, I like I like Julie Newmar a lot. She's more the I guess the iconic version of Catwoman. But mm -hmm. Lee Merriweather is freaking hot, and she is just wonderful in the movie. <laughs> It really is our movie, the one we made after the first season wrapped. Two days after the first season. Someone's forcing us to relive our past, but to what dark end? Oh, I really couldn't say, sir. Popcorn? Real butter? Real butter? Uh-huh. Time is getting short. We've got to get Batman before he gets us. How? I say it's crazy. But I say let's try it. We have to do something to get Batman out of the way. Must you be so impulsive? Ooh. <laughs> and the dynamic duo has been silenced forever. Farewell, <laughs> dynamic duo! <laughs> you notice anything strange about this picture, Bert? Does it seem abridged? Holy Screen Actors Guild, our credits are missing. Not only that, it's just the villains. We're not in it. Maybe it's the director's cut. There were there were apparently rights issues with the TV show, but not the feature film. So that's why they they used only the the movie for footage. Ah, okay. So it's a little confusing to the viewer because the viewer is usually going to associate Catwoman with Julie Newmar. Lee Merriweather, uh, you know, as wonderful as she was, I, I don't know that she was even in the running at the, at the time for the TV show. But... Um, she she does a really fine job in the movie. Now you the, said that um, your first exposure to this was the movie, like it was on TV. It was or the movie because they didn't show at the time I had cable. They didn't show the TV show yet. That movie played constantly though on cable. I might even I might even do a write up for Vintage Cable See, Box at some point. My first exposure was on TV in the reruns because and it kind of this is more of a local thing. But we got we got a really solid and awesome independent station um, mm -hmm. in late 1980. Um, locally, it was called KCPQ. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's now a Fox station. They, they, they were like the, 
because before that, all we had was like one independent station, Channel 11. And mm. they would they would show like Star Trek. So they would show everything that you would see on an independent station. Right. But then yeah. we get this new independent station and they're showing like unedited movies. They're showing good the proper cuts of Planet of the Apes. They're showing like great movies, great reruns. And then they so they're showing Batman reruns that I had never mm-hmm. seen. So we, uh, you know, I, I, I'm watching the movie and I don't know if it's meant to be sloppy or if it wasn't or if it just wasn't directed well. The shots are very lazy. The whole thing looks like it was shot in the studio. I saw boom mics in the shot sometimes. Maybe that was the intention. Yeah, that's it was, what I was meant thinking. to a, a sort of <coughs> eschew the the spirit of the old show because like they literally will go into scenes and they've got like the Dutch angles when yeah. they're walking in. It's it, they're trying to create a mood, I think. Yes, and, and yes. I think it's also it's like, hey, and we can be lazy because it won't matter. <laughs> there is kind of yeah, it has the spirit. It has yeah. the spirit of the Batman TV show. It, there's some there's there's a there's a there's an aura of cheapness about the whole thing. For me, the movie comes alive when they go back. You know, they flash back uh, to to shooting of the show and all these little weird things that happen, like how they how they did certain things. I like that too, like how they did the window gag. You know, they would do yeah. you know, where the and celebrity Betty, would pop the head up. Betty White shows up. I I wonder, was she actually on the original show? Was she like the cranky old lady in one of the <laughs> I, I don't even they, they had like big stars. They would have like a big star pop his head out, like a George Burns would pop his head out or a or um I don't know, who's another Oh well when they when they had Vincent Price as the egghead guy. Egghead starting a food fight? Yeah, and he I, I, was, a I was taken a little bit out of it because if you remember the egghead costume, it wasn't just Vincent Price with a bald cap on. Yeah, <laughs> he, he had like a like a weird egg shaped head. It was a whole mm-hmm. prosthetic head. He just like, but with this guy, they just sort of put a thing. Although I will say that all the actors that they had play when they had the Cesar Romero guy come in, mm-hmm. he looked once he got the makeup on and he bitched about putting the makeup over his mustache that he seems to need. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Once he had the makeup on? That was like, well, yeah, Cesar Romero is big. He always, he was known for having that mustache when he was he in got, movies. He, he, got the, he got the he got the the laugh right. He got the look right. Yeah. So it's like just about every actor they had come in to play the part they got right, except, again, the Adam West. He got, he got the essence of Adam West, but, like, you can't really, but physically, he was in almost in too good a shape. <laughs> he was a little too muscly. Well, yeah, to, yeah. To, he was a me. little too contemporarily in good shape. He, yeah. As yeah. opposed to like most men back in those days didn't do things like they he, didn't work out. They would just go well, on yeah, and you do like yard see, work. Unless they were like Mr. Universe or something like that. You really didn't see like abs. You didn't see like no. visible abs. I mean, we see we've seen doing the Star Trek show. We've seen Kirk with his shirt off a million times. He's in great see, shape, like, but he doesn't have like he doesn't or like, have like you visible know, abs. Uh, Michael Landon is paw, you know, for would, some reason he, they want you to work your abs these days. And I don't know why. We get a lot of like anecdotes, like little uh, possibly true stories, not legends, maybe. Um, like, for instance, the Catholic Legion of Decency doesn't like Burt Ward's penis. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, this was something that surprised me when. This sounds like a guy telling tales out now, of this school. Now, this is a TV movie from 2003. Yeah. They're zooming in on his package. Yeah, on his package. And, and it is a package. I'm like, this is a TV movie. <laughs> I didn't know you could zoom in on a package like that. It's like, <laughs> we, got, we got a problem with your penis. Yeah. He was like, what? I don't got a problem with it, as you can see. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. The trunks fit like they're supposed to. Superheroes wear tight clothes. Cuts wind resistance. Tell that to the Catholic Legion of Decency. But they don't like how I fit my trunks? Is that all you? At ease? We've tried just about everything. Every kind of restraint we can think of. We've tucked and pulled and well we're out of ideas i can't help how i'm built true but if the costume can't hide it we'll have to look at other solutions like so like uh, i wonder now i wonder because he he did have a decent sized package i'm wondering (laughs) did, did, did they embellish this actor's package to make it look like he had a package I don't. I couldn't eat. <laughs> really. I um. Maybe it's just he had so much he had to wear. They I mean, had, the like, way whole... that they showed it, it was literally like 
on its side. You know, it was like sticking out and then like hanging yeah, like a hat. It like, hangs like, to like the a, left. Like, what do they call it? Like a banana hammock? You know, <laughs> yeah, it banana. was just sort of, it was just right there. I'm like, he's wearing know, the a lot Joe Namath netted slingshot. It's like booth. half his size because he's a small right. guy. He is a small guy. I go, he's well, a tripod. He is a tripod. Yeah. Um, so they give him these, uh, I guess, drugs or something to him. He doesn't even know what's in him. him. He doesn't even know what's in him. There's no side. Yeah, they don't know anything about side effects, you know. Do not take this if you have a heart condition. I don't know. Um, in addition to this, you have a, a little a little uh, episode where Bert apparently beds down a lady who tries to kill him, and yeah. then acts and then acts like it was all part of a performance, which is very strange. This is it's a very strange little non sequitur moment. It yeah, make I, I thought that it was like the way they showed it is she seemed to go crazy. I think. It almost had to be like her goofing on him only because they both work on the same TV show. Mm -hmm. He has to leave early to go to that TV show. Right. That means she has to go to that TV show, too. Right. Yeah. So it's like we're going to meet each other there in a few hours. <laughs> I don't see why she would flip out. Right. So it's almost like she would. Then again, I'm not one to understand crazy because crazy does what crazy does. So people have their own reasons for doing things. And also, this is his recollection. What I wanted to mention was uh, Yvonne Craig. Now, she is the only presence not in this movie. They get an actress who, who kind of looks like her, has a ballpark resemblance. Um, uh, By the way, was, the, the woman they have playing her, hot, athletic. Yes, yes. I'm like, that's that's my kind. Now, I'm usually more towards like the, the curvy, dare I say, I mean, somewhat chunky. I always but thought... I, Yvonne Craig was crazy hot. As I can was. also really get into like the the sort of the thin athletic types. It's like I guess I have the two extremes. Of also, like this the, girl does look a lot like Yvonne Craig, and yes, but she's also a little taller. I can tell. Yeah, Yvonne, she, Yvonne's uh, a Yvonne shorter. Craig was kind of shorter, shorter, yeah. And she was and gets very lovely. And also, I just I, I was thinking about this because I picked up these dolls for Regan. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw the Facebook entry that I had. I but think I, I did. Uh, it's a three pack. It's a three doll set. Uh, I mean, it comes. Uh, it, it's it's Batgirl, Supergirl, and Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. I always wondered why there wasn't a Wonder Girl because these are girls, right? But <laughs> but I did manage to snag the Wonder Woman. Well, well, Bronwyn did at the supermarket. She found it. She grabbed it. So she now has all three. And these cost, these these dolls are so awesome. I know I'm a guy who plays with dolls, but um, I always thought the Batgirl's costume was so cool. It looks so much better. Than Adam West's Batman costume. Right, it was kind of, it was like tight, it was sparkly. It, it was, was tight, sparkly, made of a material that was really, and it was very flattering on her too. Yeah. And it's just so beautifully put together. It's so weird because where the hell does she come up with this costume? Meanwhile, Batman is like Bruce Wayne, who's very wealthy. Yeah. He could have any kind of costume he wants. We see He's Christian got... Bale, Michael Keaton, all these guys in mm. crazy Batman outfits that look awesome. Yeah. And very kind of like stylistically similar. They're very form fitting, and you know there are certain uh, attributes that uh, you know Yvonne Craig has that the Batgirl costume really sort of highlights. Yeah, but uh, that gets us to a moment in the movie where, like, she, she's like, I, "I know, I I know you. I know, I know what your your reputation is. So don't don't He's get like, up what, there me? What, what <laughs> me? And then as soon as they're doing like a and it was like creeping along and then like and then suddenly like, he has to stop and he just grabs her by the boob. He stops short. <laughs> he stops short. You son of a bitch. You stop short. Now was this used in the show? <laughs> I can't even remember. I I don't. I I I I would say no. That's inappropriate. That would be inappropriate for 60s television. Well, it'd be inappropriate for, for anything, really. But at the same, <laughs> there's at plenty the same of boobs time, being grabbed out there at nowadays. At the same time, this is the same, man. People were getting laid left and right. You could get away. And oh you yeah, could yeah, be, yeah. You could be very, dare I say, like uh, rapey at the <laughs> time, and it, was, and it was like almost acceptable. Like, oh men and they're grabbing. And they're, they're like, like, I mean, well, it was wonderful too. It's a nice little standout moment from the show because they're like, Adam, where's your hand? And he says, Well, it's on her shoulder. <laughs> yeah, Are you play, sure oh. it's on her shoulder? Yeah. Yes, it's on her shoulder. No, a little lower. <laughs> it's there for like 30 seconds as they're doing the scene. As yeah. As a, yeah. But Yvonne Craig being adorable, but she uh, didn't want to have any involvement in this movie. According to the Wikipedia, not the most reliable source, but I guess it's based on some public relations interviews that were done at the time. She said that she got the script and she politely declined. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why she's not really involved on the show. Well, also, we have movie. to like remember, okay, we're fans of stuff like this. You know, people are like, they have lives. Mm. And like, so like priorities. Wait a minute, what? Yeah. They do? <laughs> and so they're like, priorities, well, you know, I got something else going on. I, don't, I didn't really care about it then. I really don't care about it now. I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, so, and I'm that way about a lot of things. Right. So I can be like, yeah, I could take it or leave it. And I don't <laughs> have to do this. It does, I don't really care. I, I, maybe she just is like, eh. I mean, Adam West, eh. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> It's it. So we get to the final uh, bit of it, which is uh, the bad guys are revealed and the, the bi- bad guys uh, get the bad guys as revealed are Julie Newmar and Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. Yes. Who was uh, the original Riddler and the guy they have playing the young Frank Gorshin. Th- again, they get they hire these people. I don't know where they got them, but this guy is like the perfect young Frank Gorshin. He looks like him. Yeah. Yeah. He acts like him. And, and, I don't but, know how they do isn't it unusual though that you take like a real live life person, like yeah. a Frank Orson or a Julie Mar- Newmar, and make them the bad guys of this? They have no problem with this either. They have no. no problem with the idea that they themselves are bad guys. They stole the Batmobile, well, and at the end, doesn't he say like like you know all these years of doing this? What did it get me? And then Adam was, well, you do Vegas, you do uh, you do yeah, this, you do you, that. You kind of made your career, Frank. What are you complaining yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Julie Newmar too. I mean, Julie Newmar everywhere. She did. Yeah. These, these people are iconic. She's in a movie way. where she's, you know, it's all about these two, uh, like trannies, these three trannies trying to get to talk to her or something, yes. or she's in it or something. Well, I don't know. Well, they're I sending the a message. Movie. She sends a message yeah. to somebody to Wong Fu, as it were. Yeah. And they get Wesley Snipes, John Leguizamo, and Patrick Swayze. Yeah. But <laughs> so they they manage to save the day. They uh, this obviously very. Uh, cheap looking enormous thing of TNT blows up or something whatever it is it's kind of it's not a real explosion it doesn't look like one anyway well doesn't he say it's not even hooked up to anything yeah it's cardboard that's cardboard yeah so um they get the Batmobile back to this charity function or something yeah and then Adam and Bert hear the narrator again and they go and they, they they isolate the narrator and who does the narrator turn out to be La Wagner. La Wagner. Wonder Who, by Wonder. the way, you know, shout out to Chris Cooling on his show talking about, you know, where the actors from Wonder Woman, because he ended up on Wonder Woman. Um, he became the guy that uh, you may have seen these like on production sets. They're called Star Wagons. That's right. He he, he started that. He provides these luxury uh, Winnebago's and, and, and trucks and buses to to celebrities and movie productions and stuff like, I don't know, Will Smith's enormous. <laughs> Will Smith had like this enormous multi-million dollar gym built into an enormous bus so yeah. that he can take like his gym on the road wherever he goes while he's shooting. So I'm sure that Lyle Wagner made way more money doing that Very, than he did. Then yeah, he did like yeah. doing Wonder Woman, and I think like he was on Carol Burnett show. Very forward thinking for, for an actor. I mean, Basically, you know, he's he's you know he's a prof- it seemed like he's one of those people that like a professional handsome person. Uh-huh. <laughs> he just sort of shows up. He's sort of the man meat. Probably I'll much tell you, like what Adam I love Musk, about Lau Wagner was on Wonder Woman uh, when they introduced you know when they play the theme song Wonder Woman yeah. Yeah. and then it says also starring Lau Wagner. He's got this look on his face and he holds his hands out like 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 Henry Winkler and it's like he's saying what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> it's like <laughs> getting they a nice cast check is what you're doing. They cast me for Wonder Woman? Really? Steve Trevor? We get back to that Adam and Bert save the day. They go back yeah. to their respective lives and, you know. But it's it's not over. The car gets stolen again. And it's one of those darn orphans. <laughs> yes, the orphan. I forgot the coda involving the uh the the Batmobile getting stolen again. And to to go to go into like uh, Little House on the Prairie. Shout out to Walnut Grovecast. Uh, you know, it was Albert. It's always Albert. It's always Albert's fault. The orphan. Albert the orphan. <laughs> Albert the orphan. <laughs> Damn it, Albert! It's, it's always his fault. Something bad always happens. So there, there we have it. That's that's yeah. you know the misadventures of of Adam and Bert. Yeah, I don't know how our discussion made it sound, but it was actually very entertaining. <laughs> it was. It entertaining. was entertaining. It was definitely. It was, and I've actually I'd seen this. I actually watched it when it was on, like 2000. I remember recording it on a VHS tape off of TV and watching it and, and being entertained. 
Was this uh, something like at the time? Was it something that was heavily advertised and promoted? Or was I know it that something... Adam West. I know that Adam West went on Howard Stern to promote it because oh, really? I heard him. Yeah, I heard him on the show, and he was trying to promote it. And Howard was doing his Howard shtick, and having him do like little bits and like you know call up Wendy the retard and you know, have Eric, <laughs> Eric have high pitch Eric. Go, oh. <laughs> and Adam West is like he's being very serious. He's like oh, I have this, I have this TV movie to promote. He's so like, come on, come on, Adam. Did you bang Julie? Did yeah, you bang he was, Lee? Like, doing stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> and then Fred would be like with his first. Wah, wah, wah. Did you do uh, anal? Howard. Wah, 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 Howard. Wah, wah. A gentleman never tells. A gentleman never tells. <laughs> all right. Well, that seems like a lot of fun. Um, all right. That'll wrap this up, I guess. Uh, two Dave is walking to a bar. Yeah. And, and we're going to stumble our way out <laughs> into the. <laughs> and we're going to open the door and see the sun. Ah. <laughs> I tend to hiss when I see the sun. I go, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. All right. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you.